Hello and warm welcome to everyone joining this session today. We have uh, Nyan, Dr. Christopher, and Curtis, which uh, we are hoping would join soon. Yeah, they're with us to talk about building and solving some type safe optimization models in Haskell, which I'm sure is going to be an interesting session for us all. So without further delay, over to you, Nian and uh, Dr. Christopher. Thanks, uh, thanks again, Sandro, for having us today. So um, today we're going to talk about uh, building uh, and solve optimization models with functional programming in Haskell, of course, um, in, in this case, Haskell. So first, um, optimizations, uh, what is it? Uh, well, um, like we have some functions and then with a given constraint and then we need to minimize it, right? Uh, and that, and it has sort of every sort of application, uh, you naming resource allocation in computer, you have uh, uh, machine learning, uh, also optimization, you have um, like image processing and reconstruction problem, et cetera, et cetera. And when we talk about applications of uh, application of, of optimization, it re usually revolves around um, a algebraic modeling language, AML in this case. Uh, um, and in this case, so first of all, um, we have the input models, right? It's the optimization problems that we want to solve. Uh, it can be in uh, image processing machine learning or um, so you have this model you need to optimize. And then on, on one on the other hand, you have this algebraic modeling language where you will you know, describe your model in. And then there's also another part, the optimization solvers, like someone wrote a very good optimization solver that can take your like a competition and then try to optimize it um, with numerical, uh, my principal method, etc. cetera. Um, anyway, so uh, with the current, current state of uh, algebraic modeling language, so we identify that there are some problems, like for example, there's for GAMS and AMPOS, they are like a dedicated like language. They're not, uh, embedded a in a general purpose programming language, which may sometimes mix processing data and then describing model uh, kind of hard because of its niche. Um, and one another problem is type safety. Some like some uh, algebraic modeling language in Python, in Python or MATLAB or Julia or lack type safety. So sometimes we try to run our model and then it turned out that we have some like type error we didn't know about, and then we wasted our time. Um, and another thing is that like in, sometimes in those, like in Pyomo, in Python or something, uh, or in Jumpy, in, um, in Julia's, models are cap like a capture as programs, like they are instructions. So sometimes it's really hard to analyze and optimize those models. Like, what if we want to identify common computations? What if we want to uh, using math properties to optimize the computations? Uh, how do we do that with like, it's, it will be equivalent to static analysis of a program, which is not gonna be easy. And so, uh, so what are our goals? First, we're gonna make this uh, system type safe. So we, we want to make that like, translating the model to the algebraic model language, that, tab, that step, we're gonna make it safe, type safe. And then in the algebraic modeling language itself, we want to capture the models. We're gonna capture all the computations and then somehow eliminate redundancy and optimize computations with math properties. And then goal three, we want to generate high performance code so we can like solve it, shove it to the optimizations, optimization solvers, and then it can operate real quick. So these are goals. So 
how we do that we uh the so our solution is i write hash expressions it's a library in haskell it's an algebraic modeling language it's embedded in haskell um it has type safety where like if if you you but the idea is like you can construct invalid uh expressions and models in general like otherwise um the compiler will throw in type error like this is not a valid uh, model um it captures optimization models in symbolic form like all the expressions as capturing symbolic and then uh, we use hash consings which which is a hash mechanism to identify all the uh, common sub expressions and we have terms rewriting to simplify and rewrite computations into like our design form and we generate c code i mean c code and then that can be embedded in any, anything not just optimization solver but uh yep okay so uh let's get started with the first example of using hash expression to solve a real world problem so we're going to talk about magnetic resonance imaging reconstruction so basically like uh this is example when you go to an uh a clinic um, um and then you want to cap like take a picture of your brains anyway um what you have uh, after the mri machine take like uh take operation is like you have a full um it'll take a sample of Fourier signal of your of your brain so basically you get a Fourier signal but you only get a part like a partial signal of that like a, like a portion of that so which is uh indicating this um mask 2d mask so these these black spots are where you got the data these white spot are where you don't but, uh, and then there's also some some noise um you capture and then what you need is you need to find the image of the brain itself um uh so one might ask like why don't we take the just take the inverse Fourier transform uh i mean we can but the result is not going to be good it's going to be a blurry uh brain image like this so what do we do uh in we instead we set up an optimization problems we say um we let's minimize let's find an x uh let's find an x that minimize this expression, which is means say like a Fourier transform with X, like subtract to the signal we receive, and then we we ignore the we ignore the spot we where we don't get the data, and then we add a regularization, and then we also add a um, a bound condition that say that we only care about the pix like pixel inside the brain. Then outside we um, outside should only be between uh like the noise boundary which is very uh with a very small uh, value of negative and positive one two or something um anyway so we set up an optimization problems and we input it into hash expression so as you can see that there is the way we input it into um, hash expression is very similar to the mathematical uh, formula that we have in the first place. You can see the correspondence here. That there's objective, there's constraint, and there's a regularization. Everything looks uh, very similar to the formula. And then you put it to hash expression, it's gonna does all the calculation, optimizing computations and generate C code. And then that C code you put into the optimization solver and what you, and then you get the results is the image on the right side here. Like it looks much better and uh, has details. And then, then the doctor can, you know, do the diet diagnosis. All right, um, so that an example of uh, hash using hash expression. And then, okay, so um, now let's get back to how do we do it. Um, 
So first is let's go back to go to uh, the goal. The second goal is remember the second goal. We want to capture the models in uh, capture the model ends, then be able to optimize and then we do redundancy, right? So how we do it? Uh, of course, we have to deal with expressions, which is the basic building block here. Um, how do we represent it? We capture it in direct asynchronous graph like the, and then um, we have a map of where we store all the intermediate expressions, each entry where each expression, sub expression is a node in the graph and indexed by that map. And they're indexed by their hash and therefore allow us to identify common expression, like common expression will always be indexed in the same map. Anyway, this is a, an example of how we store the expressions. So here's an example, you have uh, variable X, variable Y, and then you have all these index in a map by their hash. And like the arguments would be, would be the argument of each operator will be the hash of the previous node, uh, as you can see in this example. All right, and here is the Haskell data, uh, data type that we used to uh, represent that. We have an op data type with various constructor. We can have either variable or it can have parameters or it can be a constant. It can be a, a sum of a list of nodes. It can be a product. It can be a scale of a node with another node, with another, with another expression. It can be a complex number constructed from two other real num numbers. And, and a node contains of an operation and element type, either, either real complex or shape. And, and there's a node ID, which is just the uh, index uh, of, uh, of each of the node in the expression map in this case. Okay. so. The question is like, uh, how are we gonna like represent expressions and how to combine them? Like, should we use, uh, the trivial way would be to use like the map itself and the note ID as a tuple to represent expressions and use that as a base to build com expressions combinators, right? Uh, well, um, and then, if we're gonna go with that, and let's see, like how are we gonna implement a um, function to add two expressions? Well, um, trivial, like, like the natural way would be to, okay, uh, there are two expressions, each with different map, right? Uh, the natural way would be to just merge these two maps and then uh, create a new node out of uh, two, uh, out of two existing node. And then we're gonna find a hash. We're gonna find a hash of that new node by you know, you know, hashing that node or if there's a collision rehashing that. Uh, and then finally it like insert the node into their union, uh, the merged map and then um, it produce a new tuple, right? Uh, it sounds e like simple enough and then it should work, uh, but actually the answer is it not quite. So the problem is that if we gonna use uh, merge to map, then uh, there's no, uh, we sometimes there'll be a case where hash collisions like in this map, what if, what happened if two expressions are hashed and like, because we, we know that this could, could be a hash collision and then there'll be a rehash, right? So what if two expressions are hashed indexed by the same ID? Uh, and if we use, if we simply merge these two map and then there'll be a hash collision, we don't deal with that. And then there, another problem is that it'll be slow because every time you combine two expressions, uh, it'll be, the complexity would be like O n plus n where n plus n is the number of nodes in each map, right? Uh, so if, so if we build expression uh, of n nodes from the graph up from zero to n, all the way to n, it will be n square algorithm. So 
not going to be that fast as we want. So the solution is, do like, so we want to build a combinators of expression, right? The solution, do not build combinators out of data, pure data, but build combinators of computations. So we use this type signature instead because we want to have a notion of underlying expression map, like some views expression should be on the existing map and then we build on top of that. So we don't have to deal with merging and, um, and then therefore could be to hash collision error. Um, so if you're familiar with Haskell type signatures, you know that this is uh, this, the case of the state monad. Um, here is it. And it's basically, a, what we're basically here is like, we have a, some a modified version of the state monad. We call it monad expression that only allow us to modify the underlying expression map like in by introducing new node. We don't, we don't allow uh, arbitrarily modifying the underlying expression map. And what happened is um, combining two expression, we're just gonna uh, follow this method. Like we built the first opera, operand, we built the first, second expression, we create a new node and we introduce the new node. These are the company, like what happened here is, is in fact, we're combining two computations to build uh, two expressions. So which would result in a computations to build the result expression. So um, what happened? The result, we handle has collision because the notes, because first notes are introduced sequentially and um, there's no merge, like we control all their process of like rehashing and uh, if there's hash collision by uh, indexing node. Like anyway, so we, uh, so, so what happened is like uh, this will happen in node, uh, in analog end because in like, we only need to retrieve index uh, node from the map and then insert to the map, which only take analog end. So building an expression of end nodes from the grow up will only take analog end. So that is how we capture expression and build a combinator of uh, expression. So um, if we wanted to make an like infix operators out of that, we just make a operator and then, then we can use that to combine expressions. Okay, uh, so that is how we capture expression. And then let's, now let's go back to the first goal. And how do we make it type safe? Because um, it's, we already have type, but the problem is now the type does not have enough information. We only have the expression builder, right? But we want more. We want to capture the shape of the expression. We want to capture the element type, real or complex, on the type level, not just on the term level the value level, right? So what happened is we introduce a new type. We call it type expression and have, and make it have two phantom type parameters. One is shape, one is element type. That, um, so what happened here is that if we have something like this type expression 15 and 15 and 15 and C, it means this is an expression of type of uh, complex and it has shape of 15 times 15 times 15. So um, from that, um, we can build a combinators out of the type. We can have a primitive constructor for variables. Uh, here is an example of how we create a new variables. Uh, so we say variable 2D of shape 20 times 15. And this will have type expression of, uh, this will be a real variable with the, the shape corresponding. And from that, we can define like all the operators that we can operate on expression, but because of the, the info on the type level, we can provide specification to each operations, right? Um, 
For example, you can, can only add two expressions of the same shape and the same element type, or you can construct a two expression, real expression of the same shape uh, from real part and imaginary part and, and construct a complex expression of the same shape. Or for example, here you can say a Fourier transform, it must be a complex expression and it has, it is going to produce a, another complex expression of the same shape. Um, and here's an example. If you try to uh, add two expression of the like different different shape, the compiler will yell like, "Hey, you can do that! Like we expect this type, but you you you're providing us this type." Uh, or another example is um, is uh, scale like scaling operator in in vector space. So we can use type family to like define a more complex constraint. Uh, for example, here, like you can, for example, you can uh, use real scalar to scale both real and complex vectors, but you, uh, and, and complex real can only scale complex vector. But if you try to scale a complex scalar to a real vectors, it will, the, uh, it will yield a type error, which we, we, which we can express that in a, in a type family and using this is like, type level programming in Haskell. So what happened here, example, if you say uh, you want to, if you try to scale a, a scalar to a complex, uh, complex scalar to a real vector, uh, the type system just simply won't allow you. You get a compile error. Or uh, another example is the projection operators. This is simply the, the similar at, uh, at Python slicing notations, but uh, only that we have type safety. So that is an example. In that example, try to uh, it, uh, project, project that, but you get uh, the index out of range. The type, the type system will tell you. And so, so with that, we have made the expressions construction uh, type safe. And because of that, we can catch the errors early. Um, we can ensure that, okay, we have this model, we input it, it must be correct because uh, otherwise the type of the, it, we would get a compile error. And another advantage is um, we can use typo and for example, using VS Code Haskell plugin, like, we can just put in a hole and then the, the editor will tell you like, okay, you need to put in a value of this type. So um, that would like assist with development in general. Okay. Um, now let's go back to go to, right? Um, as I mentioned, like we already have a ways of hashing expressions and therefore, uh, we identify common expression and index them in the same node. So no duplicate expressions. And what, what else we, can we do? We're gonna take it to the next step uh, because we have the symbolic uh, capture, like symbolic representation of expressions. We can then perform rewriting and simplify, simplifying expressions. So this can mean that we can obtain equivalent but simpler expressions uh, and therefore reduce evaluation time um, and then, but also we can share computation more than that. Like for example, if these two expression, X plus Y plus Z and X plus Z plus, plus Y, they're both rewritten to the sum of X and Y and Z, then uh, boom, they get indexed to the same node and computation is shared. Uh, for rewriting and simplification, we develop a rewriting system. We uh, add a, a built-in, domain specific DSL, domain specific language for rewritings based on matching and replacing. Uh, in our library, we can write code like, we can write code like this. Let's say like, if you get a real part of like, of a expression that was constructed from real part in an imaginary part, simply rewrite it to the, just the real part. Um, or uh, if you use multiplies to a, complex number of zero part, zero uh, real part and zero negative 
uh, imaginary part, just simply we will rewrite it to zero. Uh, no need to evaluate it. Uh, and under the hood, this is also, we use also the monad expression we introduced earlier. And, but not only, and also like, uh, not only we can simplify expressions, we can also identify special patterns. For example, in neural networks, uh, uh, we, are, we know that this is a sigmoid function, right? Uh, what happened is we can identify this pattern and then we can rewrite it to a special node called, called log sigmoid. And then uh, when we generate code, which we'll talk about later, we can have special instruction or hardware accelerators to evaluate that node, uh, log of sigmoids, for example. And um, what next? So the one, um, another important piece of algebraic modeling language is to compute derivatives because to solve optimization problems, you need to uh, a way to evaluate derivative, right? And what happened here is we, we use reverse accumulation method, but, in, um, but we produce in, like, uh, this is actually the common method used in automatic uh, differentiation, but instead of producing a numerical value of derivatives, we produce symbolic derivative expressions. And these expressions will be indexed in the same node and added to the same expression map uh, with the original function. And under the third, how do we implement it? It's still monad expression that uh, we talked earlier. So here's an example. If you have these expressions, here is the graph. Uh, here is the expression graph, right? Um, using the reverse method, if you're familiar with it, we just traverse the graph in the reverse order, and then we and we then like calculate all their um, partial, like partial derivatives with the chain rules. And what happened here in hash expression is all these uh, intermediate expressions will be added to the original expression map and they get simplified and they get indexed and they get hashed. And uh, what happened is, what, and then what happened next? And what happened in the end? Um, so as you know, as we all know, right? Like computing derivatives with the chain rule, um, we, all, we, we often end up with this multiplies with one, right? So like trivial computations like that will be simplified away by the rewriting and simplification system. And, and then um, what happened is like the derivatives, derivative and the objective function will be indexed in the same map and there, there'll be competition shared between them. Here is the example of that. You have uh, multiple nodes shared between the objective and the derivatives. Uh, so here is the uh, expression graph that that combine of derivatives and the function and the objective function of the of the um, MRI problems that we mentioned early, earlier. So I think it's look kind of nice. Um, um, so um, another point I want to mention is that like uh, when we talk about symbolic expression, uh, computing computing symbolic expression derivatives with us producing symbolic expressions, um, there's oftentimes um, associated with the problem expression swelling because it's like um, uh, for each expression, there will be many other expressions of its derivative. And, but that is not the case of hash expression because we work on a single, sing, single expression lookup table and because we have a hash constant, so, uh, uh, expressions will be in like indexed in the same node and we avoid this problem expression swellings. And um, so that is first the go one and go three, uh, go on go two. And now is the uh, third goal, generate fast code for optimization software. So what happened here is when we have capture uh, the computation of the problems. So we have a single uh, map 
of all of their uh, objective, the constraint, the derivative of, of the objective, the derivative of the constraint, all sharing the same graph, we can then generate the code to evaluate them. Like it can be a function to evaluate everything. It can be a function to evaluate just the objective. It can be a function to evaluate just the objective and gradient. And that code can be used by optimization solvers. Um, like you think about gradient descent or LPFGS or IP op. And um, in this version, we, um, we generate a, we implement a code generation that generates C and C++ code. Um, in that we use simple memory allocation where we allo allocate memory for each, every node in the graph. And then we, then we simply evaluate everything in the top logical order. Um, this, in this version, we, on, we, we only use simple for loop and also we use um, uh, FFTW3 for Fourier transform to evaluate uh, Fourier transform. Fourier transform, um, and how do we, and then with the generation generate the codes? It looks like this. Um, so it has automated data of the each variable. Uh, where is the offset of the objective? Where it's like to look up the objective, where do you look at? And there is a function to evaluate each uh, target we want to evaluate, uh, evaluate. And we have that problem.c file. And then what happened next is when we're gonna write adapter that connect the C code with optimization software code. And we have implemented adapters for these solver uh, gradient descent, LFBFGS, LFBFGSB, and IPOP. And, and then you take that adapter, you compile with, with the optimization solver and you compile with the problem.c code to generate and then uh, run it and then we get the final result. So for future work, because, um, because we have captured the expressions well, and then we allow multidimensional variable, I, uh, we have a lot of opportunity to for parallelization, like because of uh, each expression has a um, like each expression is sometimes it can be treated as a grid of number, so we can use uh, for point wise operation like addition or multiplication. We can just use uh, we can use like um, embarrassing parallel like SIMD or GPU. And also another op uh, parallelization opportunity is we can analyze the graph and then uh, from that we can generate code that spawn multiple thread each generate a independent uh, path of the graph and then merge them together, for example, here. And uh, to summarize, so there it is. So we have built a language that help us build and solve optimization models. Uh, we have made it type safe with uh, type level programming. Uh, we have made it, uh, we have captured the models and then be able to eliminate redundancies and then simplify computations. And uh, we have implemented the C code generated to make it the whole thing performant and pluggable to opt optimization solver. And um, the library is open source in this GitHub address. So uh, that concludes my uh, introduction of hash expression. Um, yeah, thank you for listening. Uh, I guess question time. Yes. Uh, thanks a lot, Nian and uh, Dr. Christopher, for uh, this wonderful session. And what type of applications have we tested this for? You mentioned the number of applications so far. Uh, so this is a very generic framework, right? So we can use it any any application that you can model it as an optimization so problems. You can use hash expression, like it's very generic. It's not tailored specific to any application. So, uh, for example, a uh, 
if you want to train a neural network, you can express it in hash expression and you can fit it into optimization solver and train it. Uh, we we have code. Uh, we have we. Uh, if you check out the GitHub, we have uh, several examples of how to use that uh, for uh, simple as a logistic regression or a neural network or MRI reconstruction. Uh, we have all the examples. So, um, in another project, we're currently using this um, to do instruction scheduling. So, that's a pretty experimental application. Um, if it works out, then you'll probably hear more about it. But it's, you know, it's, it's good to have the type safety in that application. And this is where the embeddability is really important because, um, so we've got a, you know, we've got an existing compiler. Um, it does a lot of work in order to figure out, you know, what the, um, what the dependencies, anti-dependencies are for code, for instructions that need to get scheduled into a loop or even in, into a basic block. Um, there's constraints on, um, there's control flow constraints as well. And so, you know, most of the code is about figuring out what the optimization problem is. And then the optimization problem is relatively straightforward. I mean, it could be big, but it's got a simple structure. Um, and then we want to be able to read the result back and do something with it, right? So it's not an example where you, you want to know, I don't know, what's the best portfolio, and then you get the numbers and buy your stocks or bonds or whatever. Um, we have to do significant pro post-processing with that result. So in the case of instruction scheduling, you may have an instruction schedule, but then you can't do register allocation. So then you'd want to set up a new optimization problem um, and try to come up with a solution uh, that would be, that you could register allocate. So the other thing that we had on a pre in a previous library that didn't, um, the code was messier. We didn't have the features that Haskell has now, but we did have um, physical units. And we also had exterior differential forms. So, you know, this code is much, it's much more readable. It's the performance is much better. Um, it's got property-based testing and things that the old code didn't, but we need to keep putting some, we would like to put those other features in there. I see there are no more uh, questions here, so we can end this webinar here.